Brandon. Welcome to Audio Addiction. As you can tell, we have a special guest with us. He can say his name, and uh, I guess, you know, that's it for now. <laughs> What's up? I'm Paul, um, MTS enthusiast slash historian. <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much it. So if you missed out on the last time, and you're probably wondering, why is Paul in this video? And, well, if you have some audio addiction lore, he's done the last Make Them Suffer record with me, and he was able to give some vital information about things that I didn't even pick up on. So he, I needed to ask him to come on and show me the Make Them Suffer ways. So go, you know, bless him in the comments with all of his knowledge, and if he slips up, make sure to get at him on Twitter or something. <laughs> just grill me, just yeah. Grill exactly. him. Just grill him. Just don't let up. But anyway, yeah. Um, if you enjoy it, you see here, make sure to subscribe, make sure to thumbs up as well, and also make sure to hit the bell so you're notified on when anything Audio Addiction comes out. But tonight, like we said, we're going to be talking about Make Them Suffer's new record, Worlds Apart. <laughs> All right, guys. So as you said, as Paul said, he's a big Make Them Suffer fan. So I'm going to ask him, as he, as he's the guest, what was his thoughts on the first track, uh, First Movement? Dude, honestly, um, I was like scared coming into it. Before I even started <laughs> playing it, I was like, ah, you know, because I, so I, uh, I read a Reddit AMA with yes. Sean and Nick, um, and they were essentially saying like, this sound is super different and nobody's expecting it. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm <laughs> like excited about that. Like, that's what Suicide Silence said right before they put out whatever the heck <laughs> theirs was called. Uh, so I don't even remember what it was called. But um, so nobody, like, needs, nobody needs to know. That's just that's how bad it is. So don't yeah. even try to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't even acknowledge its yes. existence. And just, that'll help the pain. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was kind of nervous going into it just because it's uh, they, they were saying it was different. Ether was obviously different. It was yes. really cool, but it was like um, much lighter in a different style for them. And the track started, and I was like, ooh, don't know what to expect. Um, and then the cleans came in, and I was like, we going to be all right. <laughs> that was a, <laughs> the cleans were a big concern of mine because they'd replaced Louisa. Yes. And I was like, uh-oh. You know, she had, a, she had a pretty remarkable voice, in my opinion. Her delivery was awesome, but um, this new vocalist is phenomenal, and I love the way they mix the cleans on this record. Um, they're a bit more forward than they were in Old Souls and especially Never Bloom, but yeah, they just, it was very striking. And this, the track just struck me as like a beautiful song, which yeah, yeah. I would, hence the course. I would also second that, that like for me, I'm not like Paul, I'm not like super, I'm like into Make Them Suffer now, but prior to knowing about them, I was like, you know, let me, let me check them out, because Paul was like really on it, and I'm like, you know, I was like, Paul, I like what Paul always sends out, so let me, let me check them out, so the first initial thought of when I was listening to him, I was like, man, this is really good, but I was like, I feel like the cleans need to have that little bit more like punch to it. I felt like they were a little bit like back, especially like he mentioned, like old souls. But I feel like mm -hmm. in this, they they definitely have a little bit more just presence to the song. Also, I feel like sonically, I would say record wise, they kind of keep in that same direction of ether. Like, I feel like they're not going to mm -hmm. go back to that. Also, I feel like more they've added a lot more melodic elements, like the piano seems a little bit more up there as well, too. Um, I guess in the mix, um, but to me, I feel like they've just created something that's for me. I enjoy personally a little bit more, maybe just because I'm a newer fan and you know I I like the newer stuff. But um, I feel like they definitely kind of captured Ether very well. But I also feel like it kind of plays out into a lot of the rest of the record. I don't know lyrically if they've if they're gonna do. I mean, I guess Paul can expound upon that, but. Um, lyrically, I don't know if they're going for a more storytelling thought process to like their songs. I, I guess not because I didn't really hear too many like, you know, I guess pl callbacks to other songs that they did prior to this. I felt like this was kind of like a new 
chapter for like that make them suffer and maybe you can disagree or agree with me paul but no i'd agree with that and that was even something that um sean had talked about in, in their ama was that uh this isn't a part of the lord of woe yeah. sequence story arc um they said it's a trilogy and that they will return to it eventually but this is this record at least is a departure from that um and it makes sense like sonically they're doing something different um yeah. and then lyrically they're doing something different although i will say there seems to be some sort of story at play for this album um i will agree with that as well i, I yeah i could definitely tell that there were some moments where like you know you could hear some sort of like story pattern you know forming in a lot of the songs but i i really enjoyed yeah. the first movement a lot i would say that it was a solid opener track without a doubt and i definitely yep, feel like absolutely. it enca yeah. encapsulates you know the sound that they're going for like moving forward uh without a doubt so do you have it also it, you're gonna say well yeah i was just gonna say like that track also like somehow instills excitement and to me that's yeah. probably the most important thing about an opening track is like if but like if i hear an opening track and i'm not excited then yeah. it's failed in some way unless unless it's you know supposed to be a sad album or whatever but for this style and for what they're going for like I don't know. I was I was so excited at the end of the song because I felt like the spirit of adventure in the song, and it was just so thrilling. And I was like, "All right, I'm so ready to dive in." So well, they have that job like, well done. They have that real like whimsical aspect to their music that a lot of I feel like de I know they're kind of like in that deathcore category. I would say don't capture very very as well as they do. I would say that they kind of mix that. In which is why I enjoy them a lot is just because their melodic mm -hmm. elements really kind of For sure. capture the listener. So I would say solid first track, first movement, obviously. And I would say that one's probably one of my favorites off the record just to kind of in solidify the record. So we'll move it into track number two, which is Uncharted. This was a, probably a, it, this was a recent single. I know that they also released Vortex yeah. pretty recently too. Um, but... I would say that this one, A, is probably the strongest of the singles, in my opinion. And also, I feel like sonically, they really kind of are doing the continuation thing with the first track. But I would say that the piano is a lot more stated in this track. In particular, like a lot of the sort of bouncy sort of riff parts, like guitar riff parts, really match very well with like the piano sort of like lines that are going on with that track uh, i really thought the cleans are amazing in this track as well i i like that to me i've i feel like this band kind of works cleans in very well as too just because like they're very like even if she's not singing she has some sort of like you know melody going on with her cleans that kind of carries throughout either the verse or the chorus or something like that or it matches well with sean's like scream so i feel like to me, that works out better than a lot of the other tracks that I've listened to from Make Them Suffer. I feel like they've kind of meshed the melodic element very, very more or much more to the deathcore aspect of their music, I would say. Um, what do you think, Paul? Yeah, and I think this song is a good sort of flagship for their stylistic change. Yes. Uh, this, this song in particular, I think, encapsulates everything that they're trying to do with this record and have done. It's got some pretty crazy riffs some really yes. heavy parts yeah. but it's also got this like weird ethereal atmospheric um, like pads like you're saying the piano line oh, yeah. is super like in your face and like almost jovial uh the cleans are awesome and like really yeah really melodic track but it doesn't shy away from the heaviness either so yeah i uh, yeah i thought this this song was a great um it's a great aggregation of the record as a whole. I would totally agree with that as well, because I mean, it's much like a continuation of the first movement. Is that I again? I feel like this is the sound that they're going forward with, and that they're going to be keeping with, and in some mm -hmm. capacity, obviously, you know, and especially in a lot of these songs later on, you know, that sound kind of manifests itself a little bit more, or like they definitely go in a completely different direction in one particular song, in my opinion. Um, but I definitely enjoy the progression. I definitely feel like the uh, melodic elements are stated a little bit more, like 
Paul was kind of alluding to. Um, but mm -hmm. another really strong track for them. I would also put this in the category of my favorites. I think this one is definitely up there with the best tracks off the record, in my opinion. So we're going to move into track number three, which is Grinding Teeth. What do you think about that one, Paul? This one, uh, this was awesome for a few reasons. <laughs> for me, uh, first off, this one just shows what their guitarist Nick can do. Yeah. This, um, they're like almost irreverent switches between major and minor chords in this song, and it's like, <laughs> jar it's jarring at first, but I think it's brilliant when you hear it in context of the whole song. I think it was awesome in guitar terms. Yeah. And then vocally, um, this felt like Sean's comeback vocally. I know people had expressed doubt, uh, especially when Ether came out. And then Fireworks were like, oh, you yeah, know, he's only yeah, doing yeah. the one like mid-range. Did he hurt his throat? Did he, like, can he not do his lows yeah, anymore? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then in this one, you get some of the just most gnarly, <laughs> disgusting yeah. lows. And uh, and also just some of the wildest highs, you know. He's got some very punchy, articulate highs going on here. Um, so I thought I thought this was a great little dip back into some of the more, like, blackened influences that they've got and just brings that arena back into play. I like that you pointed out the major minor thing because now that I'm, like, kind of getting that melody and the song kind of rushing back, I'm like... You're right, there is that major minor thing. And I think a lot of times the guitar, or at least their guitar player, isn't as stated as much. But I have to say that like his guitar mm. writing ability is like probably some of my favorite at the moment, easily. Just oh, yeah. of, like more, I guess, heavier style guitars. I would say that he his writing is, is definitely some of my favorite work so far. But I would also agree that I didn't know, I know like in Ether and a lot of the sort of tracks that they released, they weren't, he wasn't, Sean in particular wasn't going like into the low, like the, he just had that sort of mid-range and also he had that sort of like, especially in Fireworks, he had that sort of like clean strain, like that like, had like a little bit of yeah. to it. So mm -hmm. I feel like to me, like I was like, oh, that's cool. But I would totally agree that he has come back true to form and like it felt like again like kind of a culmination of like their older records meeting like the new sound of what they're going for so i feel like it was a nice cross yeah. cross up between those two uh i i would i mean all of them have been really solid i know i keep saying favorites but they're there's literally so far there hasn't yeah. been a bad track so it, it's tough exactly it's tough. so i i i want to say it again but it's real it this this is real tough but uh we'll move it into track number four which is vortex another i i would say another heavy track off the record i feel yeah. like it was a very much of a continuation of that one <coughs> um mm -hmm. this one was also released recently i would say like in the past day or two um so yeah i would say that this one had a lot of different things going for it as well. I would say that it's still heavy, but I also feel like they're going in a little bit of a different direction guitar writing wise. I feel like it was a little bit more of a a switch up, I would say in that regard in my opinion to me like the guitar writing was a little bit different. I think I like the grinding te teeth more in terms of the major minor thing, but I like that every kind of guitar part sounds really diverse and kind of mem memorable in my opinion like each track has its own sort of character to it um mm. either just you know instrument wise and also like vocally i feel like each track has a little bit of a different story to tell um i really enjoyed this one a lot I, obviously this is a single that you can go listen to but uh what did you think paul of vortex i really like this one um yeah i would agree that this is probably one of the top two, three heaviest on the record. Um, yeah. And again, he's delving into his vocal range here. But it also, um, it sort of highlighted something that I thought stood out about this record, which is the drum tones are yeah. so good on this yes. album. Oh my gosh. Like, uh, it's great to just get to hear that, like, kick isolated by itself at the beginning oh, of the yeah, track the, the, with just the, that the, drum the, intro yeah, yeah. oh my gosh if your if your headphones have any sort of bass drivers like it's just you'll know. it's you'll know yeah 
Yeah, the production on this record is through the roof. And if I had, like, if I were to nitpick Old Souls, that would be the one thing that maybe I would have adjusted would be, like, their snare tone and kick tone weren't, like, as good as Never Bloom, in my opinion. They were still really good, but um, they felt a little bit, like, Soft. sterile, I oh, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't know. Um, drums on this record, they were just so full, and they're huge. <laughs> they're definitely punchy, too. Like, at certain parts, like like you said, now I'm thinking about, like, Vortex, that it starts off with that, like, insane, like, drum intro sort of a thing with... And I was like, yeah, this is going to be a good track. When I initially heard that just, like, yeah. pounding drum at the beginning, I was like, I was like, this is going to be a monster track. And just, like, the writing, right. again, it just has that sort of balance that I, I definitely can get people going. And just vocally, I like I, I, that just sort of, I, I guess it's like a breakdown part where he's just, like, where he's, like, Da, yeah. Da, 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 have you heard, yeah. have you heard the little story behind that part? No, 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 no. Because I I didn't check the Reddit thing. Obviously, we're doing this. Oh yeah. I didn't check it. So, but what what would they say or what did they say? That that like barky part. It you know there's there's no actual lyrics. He's just sort of like yelling in yeah, yeah, sequence. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like Morse code for the acronym for the song's like subtitle which is interdimensional spiral hindering inexplicable euphoria what? so like he's he's barking i s h i e in oh morse my code god that's which that's... is classic meta yeah that's move on oh my part. gosh that okay that might have just blown my mind right there that's <laughs> my mind might be broke my, right my, now my my we just need to stop this review it's just over like, I, <laughs> take that, take I five mean, for for real that's Wow, that's crazy! Like I, yeah. I'll definitely have to go check out this Reddit, and I'll link it in the description for you guys to check out. Um, and I definitely feel like it gives a lot of insight. Like Paul mentioned, I feel like if if you want to get the full knowledge of make them suffer, there's plenty of people that have done you know countless things of just listening to the songs and kind of dissecting the lyrics. I I know Paul's one of those people. So, but um, it's it, it's crazy. Like I would say that. For me, as just a listener, I would say that a it's impressive. B, it's really cool to hear people doing something that's unique, just in general. Like I, I could, would have never thought of that Morse code thing in my entire life, but now I'm just like, this is insane. So this <laughs> is definitely this is def. I just am a loss for words, Paul. It's just ridiculous. That's that is, yeah. is absolutely insane. <clears throat> But uh, we'll move into the next track, the first track that everybody heard, Fireworks. You know, It's not a Katy Perry song. They're not doing Katy Perry cover. But I will say it's a solid song. However, I would, I would almost say that it feels like a bit of a weak track, honestly. Not in a bad way. I, I think all of the songs are really solid on this record. But just in comparison to the A, the songs that they've released so far as well as the songs to come, I feel like when I'm going back to this track, it doesn't feel as me memorable. Like, it's it, it's still a really good song, and I'm not one to, like, cut people up and stuff like that. That's If you want to do that, you can go check out, like, Needle Drop or something. But uh, <laughs> but, um, but for me, I, I really felt like this one just lacked a little bit of just... I, I memorability to it like the cool i i like the video that went along with it if you haven't checked out the music video i thought that was really cool but um mm -hmm. just it, it just felt like lackluster in comparison to the tracks that either a people have heard like uncharted and vortex but also tracks that they haven't heard yet like the first movement and grinding teeth so far i i feel like this one is just kind of like a middle ground track it's not good but it's not bad what do you think paul yeah, it's a super solid song. Um, I kind of agree that when you look back on the record as a whole, it like there's not as much on paper that just jumps out. And it's like, yes. oh yeah, that's the track where they did X or Y. Uh, I do think I'd probably be a bit biased because I also wore grooves in the old MP3 player listening to this one <laughs> before <laughs> before hearing the full record. So um, when it came on on the album, I was like, ah, old news. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you just but like, that's only because like I'd heard it a hundred times. Yeah. I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I will say I thought it was really cool that uh, Sean did so sort of like pitch yell uh, yes. deals at the end of the track. And then that final, um, I would call it a chorus, but it's just a one-off melody that 
their vocalist has at the end of this song. Yeah, that I thought was so good. Y- yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I thought that was incredible, and I can't decide if I'm super happy or mad that they only used it once and just you know <laughs> on to the next. Because on the one hand, that's awesome, um, I- and I think it's important to not like drive things like that into the ground it's too common for bands yeah. to write a good chorus and yeah, then repeat yeah. the chorus five times in the song and just absolutely kill it in that way but um yeah i'm i i really like that last the last like 30 seconds yeah. of the song it it goes from like oh this is like an eight out of ten song in the last 30 seconds i'm like whoa like, yeah, yeah just it stepped you, it up just, a yeah, ton <laughs> they just like took it up a notch i would i exactly. would say that but i i, I want to say this is probably the only gripe that i've had throughout the record is that like even in the music video a little bit and obviously it's a video so that doesn't count but like sonically i feel like to me they're like underutilizing the cleans and you know the the piano parts i mean they're obviously stated in a lot of other tracks like we mentioned uncharted is probably the most stated track with the piano part in it but Mm -hmm. to me i feel like they could either like obviously and then they kind of run into that problem where like do they add a lot of melody into there and then just it gets oversaturated so i mean to me i would have liked maybe like a sprinkling more of cleans like throughout like maybe like a little bit of lines instead of you know having those sort of like melodic runs yeah. in my opinion yeah vocal pad stuff yeah. yeah i mean not that it's bad i feel like it definitely adds context to the track but to me you know, for me, I listen to a lot of like post hardcore and a lot of you know more sort of metalcore stuff. So I I find that I I'm missing that sort of element of like the back and forth. And I know that deathcore kind of falls into that category, you know, risk like a little bit, but not like crazy amount. So to me, mm-hmm. I feel like there could have been more cleans. I don't know if Paul agrees with that or not, but I I definitely feel like that was something to me that had to be stated uh uh-huh. i'm i'm pretty happy with the ratio Amount, on this yeah. record yeah because like for me this will always be primarily a heavy band that's so true. That's like true yeah but I, I know what you're saying just like um yeah for for your listening the- preference maybe more cleans would have been better <laughs> but, but i mean i it's... feel like it's different for everybody like i know exactly gonna, yeah. I know someone's on the computer right now just like typing up a memoir of like why this guy needs to just not talk about this band and <laughs> right. that's fine you know that's fine we can have opinions but we're gonna yeah. move into the next track paul contact i feel like there isn't too much to talk about with this one it feels very much like an interlude yeah. sort of track I do like interludes. I've stated that immensely on a lot of different uh, album reviews. I would say that this kind of adds a little bit more of a storyline, yeah. like you were saying, to the overall record. Um, so I, I I wouldn't say sonically there isn't much going on, obviously, just because it's a, a, a kind of, I would say, musical palate cleanser. But uh, for sure, I, I would definitely say that it's, it's well needed in... So with the tracks that they've had so far but do you have anything else to add with that paul or not too much it just it reminded me a bit of uh the space ep by prada oh, they yes. have on celestial yeah. mechanics um yeah, yeah. sort of had the same effect for me, for me which i thought was really cool yeah it is it is a good palette cleanser to take you from um just sort of the rhythm of the album and provide a bit more up and down um, it also, I love when bands have those just because it sort of starts to develop a soundscape and you, to me yes. at least it creates more of a mental image than if you just have these tracks, straightforward lyrics, you know, stylistic, maybe there's some variation, but like, yeah, when there's a good break like that and they do have the fun ambient sounds and, you know, uh, garbled dialogue and things like that happening, it sort of like lets your imagination wander a little bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's a cool track. I, I definitely agree with that. I like that it adds a little bit of flair to to the record without a doubt so we're gonna move into track number seven which is power overwhelming i personally was surprised by this track when i listened to it i was like wow this is quite a switch up i would say to me it almost borderlines that like new metal kind of sound if i yeah. if i can say that with some uh with some honesty 
uh yeah. i definitely feel like it rides that kind of new metal wave um it was definitely out of left field i would say that this one in particular was kind of the black sheep i would say of the record in in a regard Agreed. because it's just so different like when you listen to it yeah. when you get a chance to listen to this record it's completely like if you thought you knew make them suffer then they're just like here you go you didn't so jokes on you <laughs> but i thought it was yeah. a really sick track uh, i really enjoyed it. it had some great bounce to it. it had some great vibing feelings to it i felt like the the lyrics i, I typically don't point this out because i'm not a lyricist and i don't plan on being one but um i feel like it was a little bit childish it, like the guy was saying like pick up the phone that's all i can remember from like the one lyric that that's yeah just constantly reminding you know constantly coming up in my head but uh otherwise sonically i thought it goes hard so what did you think paul well the first thing that jumped out at me before i even heard the track was that phrase power overwhelming is yes, a starcraft yeah. it's a starcraft 2 reference <laughs> which i thought was really cool <laughs> um, i used to play a ton of that game um so that was a fun little easter egg but uh, yeah, that that was like a weird thing that resonated with me as well. Was like, which you would know if you would pick, like, check your phone. And I was like, ah, I, I don't like it when bands do that because it takes away a timelessness of the song where it's like, now we know that this record has to be placed in the 21st century or the 20th <laughs> oh, century. Yeah. I, I didn't you know, it, think about that. Yeah. Yeah. It, I don't know. Like, that's a big thing that I liked about Never Bloom. Um, and Old Souls had this in an allegorical way, but with, you know, never, Old Souls Old Souls had it because the story was a sampler out of a timeline of parallel stories, which I thought was cool. Never Bloom had sort of almost archaic language and like in a prose sense, very like lyrical language um, that never touched on anything modern or anything, you know, approaching what we have in current society. So yeah, I thought it was weird that there is that little like, couple phrases that made reference to modern society but i a lot of my judgment i'm holding until i hear some sort of statement either from the band or some sort of theory about what this record is about yeah. in the story exactly. terms because i i do think there is some story going on between just the content from the fireworks video um some of the dialogue that appears to be in songs a lot of like he said she said he thought um just that type of language i think i think there's definitely something going on i'm just not sure what yet but I also yeah, feel it was like, a weird. It was a weird track. <laughs> I also feel like yeah, just in general, it was a weird track. But I feel like it was kind of mm. like also another very much like a palate cleanser because it it was just like whoa, like what what are they trying to do here? But at the same time, like even with the video right. referencing the video, like they had them as like kids, so I would assume that it's like some sort of like maybe like brother sister or like some sort of like yeah. family occurrence that's going on with that. And I also feel like right. he mentions telephones, so that can be anywhere from, like, you know, the 19... I don't even remember when phones were invented. Yeah, I right. Sound like a, I sound like a complete idiot, because now I'm on the internet saying I don't know it <laughs> when phones were invented. Um, yeah, I just left it at uh, 20th century. There you go, and, yeah. So I think unless, it, it, unless they were in the late 1800s, which is a possibility. I know they had telegraphs. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Um, so we'll, ne we'll probably find out maybe later on when they decide to do that or you know you can probably go ask them on their tour that you're doing for america oh my you, gosh if you didn't find right. out about that already um but i thought this one was definitely a weird kind of oddball track but we'll move it on to the next one track number eight which is midnight run i also felt like this one was a little bit odd too i felt like it was more reserved but it felt a little bit odd as well but le like sonically i feel like they've just been killing it so far with guitar just heaviness brutalness as well as like the like just the rest of the instruments like drums bass it definitely feels like all these tracks have that new production flavor to it that you know like past records that they've done haven't had so i feel like punch wise they definitely got it um i can't remember too many memorable things from this song and maybe paul can enlighten me on some of those things that he may have picked up on but to me, I felt like this one was another sort of solid track, but if he can enlighten me, maybe I might switch, change my mind. But what do you think about Midnight Run? <laughs> um, um, I love the guitar work on this track. It's like, it's this perfect medium between like techie 
and then just like straightforward power. Yes. Um, yeah. And Nick combines those in a way that's like so creative, but also intuitive. I it's really hard to explain, but like the riffs that he plays, it's like they all. It's like as soon as you hear, it, like of course, like that makes sense. But at the same time, listening to them or seeing him play, it's like oh my gosh, you know, like so much thought has gone into this and it's so different than anything that we've got out there right now. I think, honestly, I think this album, in both terms of guitar and honestly, a lot of the drum work is very genre bending. Yes. Like this yeah. is this is one of the few metalcore, deathcore hybrid records that has no blast beats, no like yeah. tremolo picking going on. Um so none of the tropes are really there, you know, but <laughs> still the consensus is sort of eh, like deathcore, metalcore, heart, you know, like black yeah, and metalcore. Yeah. <laughs> we're not sure. So I, I think they deserve a lot of respect and a lot of recognition, recognition for stepping so far out of the box that it's like we really don't know what to do with them categorically. I think I, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I would also second that a lot, too. I, I've really, really enjoyed I play guitar, but I'm not like nearly as proficient as a lot of these players, uh, especially Nick. You are. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. And Paul, you are a proficient drummer, and probably. Well, we'll talk about that in a, a little later on, which I'm really excited to talk about later. But basically, they're good. I would definitely say that they kind of combine great elements of metalcore, deathcore, like black metal. And just they have like a really good culmination of a lot of different sounds, a lot of ambient sounds too that they incorporate like vocally as well as you know just just sonically they have a very pantheon of different you know musical genres under their belt. So I would definitely say maybe I have to go back and give it another listen and I have to dissect it a little bit more. But I I enjoyed Midnight Run a lot. I would also agree that it's probably up there with probably my favorites as well but we'll move it into track number nine which is dead planes and we'll pass it off to mr paul since he seems excited to talk about it what was your thoughts on it this song is phenomenal so <laughs> good um yeah so if i had to pick a couple favorites it would be this the last one save yourself in the first yeah. movement but they're all favorites for different reasons because they're very different sounding tracks like this um, fulfills sort of a long-standing curiosity that I've had that, that would be like, what would they sound like if they took, you know, more like Arabic scales and yes, um, yeah, 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 and oh my gosh, like uh, the guitar is haunting. You know that there's like this sort of creepy intro, um, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, Arabic yeah. sounding deal. Um, the vocals on this one are like Sean has never done anything vocally like this before in any of their prior records. Um, so it's reassuring, but also <laughs> just so exciting to see him do some of these like lows and uh, um, like hybrids where he'll just start low and like slide up and do these just nasty Nat little yeah, licks. Stuff, yeah. Oh man. Um, yeah. Somehow it's catchy as well, even though there are like no cleans on this one. I don't yeah, think there are any cleans. I don't think, I think you're right. Yeah. There is no cleans on this one, but I, I would also agree that this one is one of my favorites as well. This one just had that great, Arabic sort of like Egyptian sort of vibes going on with it. Uh, yeah. Vocally, I would say oh, that's it's really tough, but I would probably say this one, along with probably Vortex, I would say are the two strongest vocal tracks in terms of Sean's mm -hmm. vocals. Um, really, really heavy. Uh, probably up there with the heaviest as well. Um, but this one will blow your mind i'm excited for a lot of people to hear this one As, like paul said if you're a fan i feel like and you've been waiting for this sound i feel like you're definitely gonna get it and you're gonna get it in speed it's the one <laughs> it's the one so go go check this one out when it comes out and then lastly of course save yourself uh paul what did you think about this one as well dude i think honestly this is my favorite on the record um this, this is like, um, this was so huge to me as sort of a fan of their older work. Yeah. And then, you know, loving where the new direction has come and then just hearing like lyrically this one, um, just the way that Sean chose to end off the record yes. was like yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty breathtaking to me. Like, not gonna lie, I like teared up a little bit in the car <laughs> so, when so I first I. heard yeah, the song. So I. That's oh my gosh. Um, so he's got this 
intense, like harsh spoken word segment that yeah, goes yeah. on for almost a full minute and like um, very self aware and super, super uh, emotional. Like even delving into how he tends to deal with his problems under the guise of like metaphor and illusion and you know just like calling himself out in a bunch of ways just being so brutally open and honest i was like oh my gosh like this is (laughs) intense um yeah beautiful cleans very um gosh compelling guitar (laughs) strong vocals throughout but yeah just that um just like the honesty of the lyrics this was one that i was like that's it that's the one <laughs> yeah i i would also agree like i i didn't feel so compelled to like feel something for sean more or less in this track in particular i would say that this one will definitely if you've been a fan for a while and in like i i would put it up there in the ranks of tracks like um what was what was the one bear tooth track sick and disgusting that one was another mm. kind of like emotionally like self-aware track. provocative yeah provocative yeah. track um so i mean i i mean obviously they're two different entirely different bands but i would put them in that same category of like tracks that if you want something to emotionally tug at you i feel like those capture those moments in true or just destroy you on or your yes, car right yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> or like you know just let just just have a box of tissues ready prepared yeah. for you to just cry for casual annihilation just for ca- yeah just if somebody asks you just be like i just listen to you make them stuff a record just don't bother yeah. me yeah but uh, honestly chopping onions <laughs> who left the onions <laughs> out but um this yeah this right re- i think it was a great way to end the record like off with a complete another bang um i feel like structurally they felt the most solid in this track i feel like cleans yeah manifested themselves very well in this track they just fit enormously well and i have to give a you know shout out to their their uh, pianist and vocalist i think that they kind of mesh very well sean's vocals especially at the end like sean said I and mean, paul said i completely mind blanked but i would say that they just mesh very well at that end part like mm. if you had to listen to any song I would say this one with a hundred percent certainty. Yeah, I feel like this will either, emo- like I said, either emotionally move you or just sonically capture you in a way that I feel like no song this year so far, in my opinion, has kind of really got me emotionally captured. Same. So yeah, I would say with twenty hundred million percent certainty, you need to listen to this track above anything else. Yeah. Um, and uh, so. We're going to go into some pros and cons of the record. Paul, do you have any pros and cons about this record? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> like I was saying earlier, I think a huge pro of this album is that it is truly genre bending in yes. a lot of ways. Um, the drums, you've got no blast beats, everything from like new metal type beats as seen in Power Overwhelming to yeah. um, you know, like rock beats like in Fireworks and Vortex has got some of those like classic deathcore beats. But yeah, just instrumentally, just all over the place in the best way. It never feels disjointed. It always feels well thought out and curated. Um, and same goes for guitar. Like it's the guitar is absolutely insane like there's an incredible amount of thought that went into it but it feels natural somehow um even though it's jumping back and forth between major and minor and it's uh you know the riffs are complex and techy at times uh but it never feels like okay now this guy's just shredding because he wants to hear himself shred it just it always you know it sounds it sounds genuine and honest and um yeah compelling vocally um awesome vocal record it's everything and more that never bloom had in terms of vocal range and then clean vocals are like honestly they said they said people wouldn't notice a difference between louisa and the new girl and i was like i don't know about that but it was honestly (laughs) true like i mean her her vocals were so spot on and i thought they were mixed better in my opinion like they were more forward in the mix which is i think where they should have been um so yeah tons of pros for this record uh also just the whole the whole sort of trajectory of the record sonically works it flows super well and you never you never feel like oh like it needs to slow down for a second (laughs) because it you know like it knows when to slow down and it knows when to speed up 
Um, so it's a very natural cadence to it. If if I were to list cons, really, uh, just like we were saying, a couple blips lyrically where I was like, ah, I don't know, you know, some like weird references to modern culture that I wouldn't have expected from them. And I sort of was like, I don't know why that's in there. Um, I'm trying to think of another con, really. I really couldn't find any, honestly. Like when, when you know, when I was coming up with trying, well, what what you were saying, and obviously what I was trying to think of, I feel like they encapsulated everything I like about a heavy and melodic record. I feel like they ride that fine line between great melodic parts and great heavy parts that you know you can just mm-hmm. throw down to, like either in your car where yeah. people are staring at you and you know, you're driving your car and you're like air drumming i know i'm being very specific that's only because i'm speaking on my own hat behalf but um, hey i relate I, directly so. <laughs> but um i feel like to me you know there are parts where you know sonically you can sing along and i love that aspect of you know music and i feel like that's a great part about you know i would say this sort of genre you know cloud of genres um i would say without a doubt but mm-hmm. to me, it just has this overall catchiness to it as well as, like you mentioned earlier, has just a great flow to it. You know when it knows when to stop, it knows when to pick up, and it just, I also feel like with a lot of records, they don't finish off strong. And I feel like with Save Yourself, mm-hmm. they couldn't have finished off in a better way. They really took what Make Them Suffer is and kind of put it on a new level, so... You know, each, yeah. with each record, I feel like they have progressed, they have moved on. There are some things that maybe they have left behind, but in my opinion, I really like this new sound. I like the new vocalist. I think her name is, I looked it up on Instagram, Booka. You're amazing. Mm-hmm. Salutes to you. Uh, but definitely, for me, I think, I, I, I mean, I'd have to say this is probably my favorite up in my contenders for albums of the year, without a doubt. Yeah. But um, Same do you here. have anything else to add, Paul? Uh, just that this is such a perfect progression for them yes. musically. Like I, I always have mixed emotions when bands try to change up their sound <laughs> in any way, <laughs> because it's like, I like you for what you did. Please <laughs> not, don't not, do anything not, yeah. different. Like, um, is the temptation. But then on the other hand, it's also like, of course, you know, we don't need another Amur. You yes. put out your seventh straight record um, of zeros and then the occasional all one. Right, listen, this is not your channel. This is my channel. <laughs> I don't need to take I don't need to take a bullet for you. I mean I would gladly take a bullet for you, but I don't <laughs> <laughs> follow Paul Learman on on Instagram and make sure to hate him on the <laughs> about the new Amur. I will say <laughs> The new side, year is side good. Tra- I was gonna say sidetracking. The, the prior the prior four <laughs> are the same thing. <laughs> but anyway <laughs> lastly guys we're gonna give a rating for this record oh man i'm gonna have to go with it's man it's so close to perfection it's not even funny i would probably give it it's got to be a 9.5 out of 10 it's it's nearly perfect like paul said there lyrically there are some blips but sonically 100 percent. like they absolutely got what I love about melodic parts and they absolutely got what I love about just heavy in your face brutal fist punching stuff everything that you want in a in an album so I'm gonna give it a 9.5 what is your rating Paul I will I'll give it a 9.75 Ooh, because okay yeah not to not to point yeah, two yeah. five up you but oh, okay. uh um I no, I'm in the same boat I think sonically the delivery, the writing, the progression was perfect. I wouldn't change a thing about the way it actually sounds. Um, yeah, like I was saying, vocally, it's all over the place in the best ways. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, lyrically, I'm waiting for an explanation <laughs> on the story, and there, you know, just a couple. In not a big deal, but there, yeah, especially in just power overwhelming. That one song, yeah, couple yeah, spots yeah. where I was like, it's out of character, and it to me, it lost some of the power it could have had if it had been a little more timeless, you know, in references. the power wasn't overwhelming. Exact. Underwhelming. Power (laughs) underwhelming. Oh my god, that was was such a terrible joke. But on that that, (laughs) that note, make sure to 
let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on this record. Obviously, it's not out yet, and we were gracious enough to find it early. I'm not going to tell you how I found it early, but I'm just going <laughs> to tell a, you. I was going to ask, but I'm if that's gonna, off limits, I'm we're just not going to go we'll, we'll talk about it off camera, but basically like go the to, band didn't give it to you. just whatever anyway we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna tombstone it here let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on the singles so far that record will be out at the end of this month so definitely go pick it up i feel like you know a lot, a lot of australian bands are getting a lot of love but i feel like this band deserves a lot of love and i know that they're mm. doing a headliner tour in the u.s with spite and enterprise earth they're both freaking heavy oh, yeah. bands. So that one's going to be a monster. If you enjoy what you see here, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to like the video. It really does go a long way. Um, and if you enjoy us a lot, we have a merch store. And there's a link in the description if you want to check that out as well and support me. Also, check out Paul's band, The Wise Man Fears. I feel like people in this sort of music will like his band. They are coming out with a new record really soon. So you should also check that out. Which <coughs> may may be coming out on our channel really soon. I can't really disclose yeah. any more details. Who can about say? It. Who knows what the future holds? Uh, who knows? <laughs> it's may may be. It might happen. So be on the lookout. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that bell so you do get notified of when it does come out because it will come out really soon. <laughs> anyway, Spoiler thanks alert. to Paul for coming on and being the Make Them Suffer flagship U.S. Uh, fan number one fan <laughs> USS uh, MTX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> make sure to go follow his band and uh if you live in the indianapolis area they are doing a tour really soon so paul if you want to plug yourself a little bit feel free to check us out um the wise man's fear follow us on socials spotify we have a record coming out August 10th that we worked super, super hard on for the past two years. It's been forever in the making, so very excited to finally have it out. Also, check out Whale Bones, Indian Alternative. Um, we go in actually tomorrow night to begin tracking drums for a new record, so get on it. Oh, dang. Yeah. I'm super pumped for that record, too, even though I feel you like should that's going to be. I feel like that's coming out in, like, next next year around like march or something but you gotta you gotta make them sweat a little yeah bit, i know. You know well now you heard it here first on this yeah. this uh lovely album review thanks to paul <laughs> once again i know i keep thanking him but i have just an obnoxious obsession of just thanking people way too much but uh <laughs> there are uh, worse habits uh, you'll do well in canada <laughs> when you go yeah yeah, yeah i will <laughs> I, i'll be i'll fit it right in but yeah. thanks to Paul for coming on. My name is Brandon. My pleasure. We hope you got your fix, and we'll be talking with you soon, guys. Peace. Hey, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching, of course. Uh, if you enjoy what we do, make sure to go check out the other series we do. We do album reviews, we do band interviews, and we do live videos, so definitely go check that out. Um, hit that subscribe button. It really helps our channel, helps us grow. Make sure to hit that like button as well. Uh, go follow us on social media. That's all down below. We try to keep that as updated as possible. We also made a new website where we'll be posting photos of upcoming concerts and stuff like that, which you can go check out at audioaddictionmedia.com and come get your fix with us, guys. Talk to you later. Deuces.